Welcome. This is my instructional video on Math 2, Section 3.2, Simplifying Radical Expressions. Okay, first thing here, complete the following addition table. Note that they're both rational and irrational add-ins. That means things are being added together. Okay, so 7 plus 5, so notice that makes 12. That's kind of cool. Negative 3 plus 5, that makes 2. Uh, pi plus 5, well, that's 5 plus pi. Because 5 is rational, pi is irrational. You can't add those together. They're not like terms. And then the square root of 2 plus 5. So that's 5 plus the square root of 2. So just like pi, the square root of 2 is irrational. So you cannot add an irrational number to a rational number and simplify it. And then 5 added to negative square root of 2. And then 7 and the square root of 3. Well, that's 7 plus the square root of 3, just like the last 3. Hey, we have a rational number added to an irrational number. Negative 3 plus the square root of 3. Same thing. Irrational, or rational number added to an irrational number. Pi plus the square root of 3. Well, these are both irrational, but they're not like terms. So they cannot be simplified. And radical 2 plus radical 3. A lot of people want to say that's radical 5, but no, it's not. Because here's the thing, what's radical 2? Radical 2 is approximately 1.414. And radical 3 is approximately 1.732. Supposed to be a decimal there. Okay, and so radical 5, that's like 2.2 something. Because the square root of 9 is exactly 3. So the square root of 5 has to be less than 3. And notice, what's the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3? 1.4, 1.7. So if you add those guys together, that's going to make 3.1 something. Which is way bigger than uh, 3, which is the square root of 9. So these guys do not add together. So to add two radicals together, they have to have the same radicand. Now, here's where adding radicals makes sense. So, example. What's 2x plus 3x? You should say 5x, of course. Yes, because they're like terms. So what happens when we add like terms? The terms have to be exactly the same, and the only thing that changes is the coefficient, which is the number of the term. So we've got two of these guys plus three guy, these guys. That gets me a different number, five of those guys. Now, what happens with radicals? Well, let's say we have radical two and four radical two. These are like terms because radical 2 and radical 2 are both the same number, 1.414 something, right? Can't write an irrational number as a decimal. So we can't rep the only way we can represent it exactly is just like it's written as radical 2, or you could say the square root of 2. But notice we have one of those guys plus four of the same guys. Well, hey, one plus four of anything makes five of those things. So notice if you want to have a rule for adding, adding radicals, it's, hey, you have to have the same radican. That's the thing inside the radical. And notice here we have negative radical 2 and radical 3. Those are different radicands, so they're not like terms, so they can't be simplified. So what do you notice about adding here? The only ones that actually simplified were the ones that were rational numbers. So notice you cannot add a rational number to an irrational number and simplify it, right? And you cannot add two irrational numbers that have different radicands. So now, contrast that with multiplication. 7 times 5 is 35. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Pi times 5 is 5 pi. 5 times the square root of 2, or the square root of 2 times 5 is 5 square root of 2. Negative radical 2 times 5 is negative 5 radical 2. 7 times radical 3 is 7 radical 3. Negative 3 times radical 3 is negative 3 radical 3. Pi times radical 3 is radical 3 pi. 
or you could say pi radical 3. Radical 2 times radical 3, that actually simplifies to be radical 6. Negative radical 2 times radical 3 is negative radical 6. And that's because negative radical 2 here, that's actually two numbers. It's negative 1 times the square root of 2. So we multiply it times the square root of 3. We have three things being multiplied here, and those two can be simplified. So this ends up being negative 1 times the square root of 6, also known as negative square root of 6. So notice the multiplying compared to adding. Adding, only special things actually simplify to be less complicated than just saying they're being added. Here, everything simplifies. So multiplying, we can multiply anything. Adding, we can only add like terms. That's a theme for algebra. That's like a really important idea to understand. Okay, uh, the exponent properties. So the powers property. So if you multiply the bases, notice the bases are the same. You get the same base here, and the exponents get added together. So x to the third times x to the fifth would equal x to the eighth. The quotient rule, so, or the quotient property. So uh, a to the m divided by a to the n is a to the m minus n power. And by the way, a cannot equal zero. And then there you go. And then the power property. So uh, actually, this is the product property. Excuse me. Let me see. This is the power property down here. a to the m that whole thing is raised to another power n, that's a to the m times n power. And then these two guys here are the product rule and the quotient rule. So if you have a product raised to a power, that's each factor raised to that power. If you have a quotient raised to a power, that's each the numerator to that power divided by the denominator to the power. Now, a lot of people say that n here is distributed to the a and b, and same thing here. That's not true. Because the real name of the distributive property is the distributive property of multiplication over addition. These guys are not being added. These guys are not being added. This is not distributing. Okay? It kind of looks like distributing. That I get. But it's not distributing. So please don't say that. That will elicit probably a wise response from me. Wise guy response from me. Okay. Simplify the expression and assume all the variables are positive. So here we go. So I'm going to use the product rule right here. So x y to the ninth is x to the ninth y to the ninth. And then we're taking the cube root of the whole thing, which means we're raising it to the one third power. And then we use the so we use the product rule to make this part right here. And then we use the product or not the product rule. Yeah, it is product rule. Sorry. And then we're going to use the product rule again. So this is x to the ninth to the one third, which is x to the nine times one third power and y to the ninth to the one-third, which is y to the nine times one-third power. And one-third to nine is three. So that's true for both these guys. So final answer, x to the third, y to the third. Okay, this guy right here. So when you look at this, it's like, how the heck do you do that? Well, exponents are actually easier. So this is x to the 1 fifth power. So that's what the fifth root of x is. And the square root of x is x to the 1 half power. And now we're using the exponent rule. So what's happening? Hey, we're multiplying the same base. So we're going to get this same base out. And the exponents are going to get added. So we're going to get 1 fifth plus 1 half. Okay. This is the part that sucks for those of you guys that don't do well at fractions. So we have one fifth plus one half. We're looking for a common denominator, the lowest common multiple of five and two. That's going to be ten. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take each of these guys. I'm going to multiply by one. And when I'm done multiplying by one, this is going to equal something over ten added to something over 10. Now this first guy over 10 is going to equal 1 fifth. So the question is 5 times what equals 10? Well that's going to be 2. And then for this red box to be 1 that means the numerator has to be 2. And then we multiply this fraction times 1 fifth and hey we multiply big fraction bar multiply across the numerator across the denominator. So 2 times 1 is 2 over 10. If you put 2 over 10 in a calculator it'll tell you 0.2. If you put 1 divided by 5 in a calculator, it'll tell you 0.2. They're the same number. And then 2 times what equals 10 here? That's going to be 5. 
So for the red box to be 1, the numerator has to be 5 as well. I multiply the two fractions, multiply across the numerator, across the denominator. So we get 5 over 2 times 5, which is 10. So 5 over 10, same number as 1 half. But now they have the same base. They're like terms. So 2 tenths plus 5 tenths is 7 tenths. So that means this guy here equals x to the 7 over 10 power. Final answer. Now if you want to put that in radical form, be my guess, that's going to be x to the 7th power, and then we're taking the 10th root of that. So there's another way to say the same thing. This guy right here. So I'm going to simplify this part here. So this is x squared y raised to the second power. So I'm going to use the product property. So this is x to the second squared. That means I'm going to multiply the exponents. So that's x to the fourth. And this is y to the first squared. So that means those exponents get multiplied. That's y to the second. And then we're going to multiply times y. This is the fourth root of y to the fourth. So that means that's going to be y to the fourth. And then we're taking the fourth root. So 4 over 4 is actually 1. So we have x to the 4th times y to the 2nd times y to the 1st. Hey, now we're multiplying two bases that are the same. So y to the 1st times uh, y to the 2nd. So we add those guys. So we end up with x to the 4th still. And then y to the 2nd times y to the 4th, or 1st is y to the 3rd power. Final answer. Pretty crazy. All we had to do is some multiplying and adding in there. But that's only if you know the exponent rules. If you don't really know the exponent rules, good luck to you. Okay, next problem. Fourth root of x to the 8 over x to the 6. Okay, so there's, man, so many ways to do this. Here's one way real quick. How about the fourth root of this guy divided by fourth root of this guy? That's the uh, product property. We could say that's the fourth root of this radicand over that one. So that's x to the 8th over x to the 6th. And x to the 8th divided by x to the 6th is x to the 2nd. So this is the 4th root of x to the 2nd. So that's x to the 2nd divided by 4 power. 2 over 4 reduces to be 1 half. So this is x to the 1 half power. So that's like a pretty sexy looking answer like that. Or you can put that in radical form and say, well, that's the square root of x to the first. So it's the square root of x to the first. There it is, looking all sexy in its radical form. Another way to do that, guy. Would be like this. Just take it's the numerator and denominator are already kind of separated that way. Just take it. So this is x to the 8 divided by 4 power. And this guy here is x to the 6 divided by 4 power. So that equals x squared over x to the 3 halves. And then I'd be like, okay, so that's exponent rule number 2. So we go back here. Exponent rule number two, quotient property. A to the m over a to the n equals a to the m minus n power. Okay. So x to the second over x to the three halves is x to the two minus three halves power. So two over one minus three over two. Common denominator is 2, so I'm going to write this as something over 2 added to something over 2. And to make this guy, since it's over 1 over 2, we're going to multiply by 1 in the form of 2 over 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. Then we have negative 3. So 4 divided by 2 is the same as the whole number 2 we started with here. So 4 halves and negative 3 halves is positive 1 half. So boom, we get this guy is equal to x to the one-half power. Oh, notice that's what I had a second ago. That's an expo exponent form. Now if you want to put that in radical form, that's the square root 
of x to the first. Boom. Either way you slice or dice it, that's how it works out. Okay, this guy right here. So 8. Now, here's the thing. Letters are actually the easiest part. The algebra is the easy part. The coefficients are the hard part for most kids. So 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2, so 8 is really 2 to the third power. So that's how I'm going to represent 8 here. This is 2 to the uh, third power raised to the two-thirds power because we're using the product rule here. So it's this guy to the two-thirds power times x to the ninth to the two-thirds power. So now we have exponent rule number three, base raised to power raised to another power, the powers get multiplied. Base raised to power raised to another power, same base, powers get multiplied. So we get the same base here too. And then three times two over three, the threes are actually gonna cross cancel. That's gonna give me a two for the exponent times x. And then two thirds of nine, when you multiply these guys, three is gonna cancel nine. Partly that's gonna leave three times two is six. And then I simplify further, 2 to the second is 4, times x to the 6. Final answer. This guy down here, same thing, 64 is 8 times 8, 8 is 2 to the third, and the other 8 is 2 to the third, so 64 is actually equal to 2 to the sixth power. So. Notice how cool factoring is. Factoring like saves my life on this stuff, literally. And so 2 to the 6 raised to the 1 6 power. And then times x to the 12th raised to the 1 6 power. So here we, we got 2 to the, okay, we got 2. I don't know why I'm just going to write 6 down. Let's try that again. So the base is 2. So a base raised to a power raised to another power. The powers get multiplied. 1 6 of 6 is 1. And then same thing here. Base raised to a power raised to another power. That means same base, x. The powers get multiplied. 1 6 of 12. 6 goes into 12 2 times. 2 times 1 is 2. So final answer, 2, which is 2 to the first, times x to the second. Okay, here we go with this one. So I'm looking at this, and there's, again, a variety of things you can do. I'm going to follow order of operates, parentheses, hey, baby, do me first, so I'm going to do that. So this is really over 1. So this is x to the 12th over 4x to the 4th. So this is x to the 12th over 4x to the 4th. And that's raised to the negative 1 half power. Okay, so I can simplify further here because there's some canceling. So this is going to be x to the 12th divided by x to the 4th. That's x to the 12th minus 4 power. So that means I have x to the 8th in the numerator. And I have 4 in the denominator. And that's raised to the negative 1 half power. Okay, so what's a negative sign on an exponent mean? Well, it means reciprocal. So what does that mean here? It means this is going to be the same as the reciprocal of this to the positive one-half power. So the reciprocal of x to the eighth over four is four over x to the eighth. And then it's raised to the opposite of this power, which is the positive one-half. And one-half means square root. So this means, hey, I'm gonna split this up. So this is four to the one-half over x to the eighth. Raised to the one-half. So, square root of 4 is 2, and a power raised to a power raised to another power. The powers get multiplied, they get the same base x, and 1 half of 8 is 4. So this is 2 over x to the 4th. Final answer. Bam. Okay, last problem. Hey, almost the same, right? Only there's no negative here, so we're not going to do the reciprocal thing. So, but I am going to simplify the parentheses first. So x to the 4th over 1 times 1 over 9x to the 12th. It's going to equal x to the 4th over 9x to the 12th. And that whole thing is being raised to the 1 half power. Okay. 
So we're going to um, simplify here first because x to the 4th divided by x to the 12th. These four x's being multiplied are going to cancel four of those. That's going to leave the assumed 1 over 9. And then when four of these guys go away, that's going to give me x to the 8th power. And then we're taking the square root of that whole thing. And then by the quotient rule, that means this is the square root of 1 over the square root of 9, x to the 8th. So the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of x to the 8th is x to the 4th. Because the square root of x to the 8th is really x to the 8th raised to the 1 half power. That's what it means to take the square root, raising it to the 1 half power. Base raised to a power, raised to another power, so we get the same base x, and the powers get multiplied. 1 half of 8 is 4. Boy, my handwriting got really horrible there. So let's try that again. This is 3 x to the fourth. So I'll want to do that one. Final answer. With that, we be done, baby. So hopefully that made sense to you. It was helpful. And if not, or if it was only partly helpful, you should probably you know tie those loose ends up by coming and see me for tutoring, getting some one-on-one -on -one instruction. There we go. Other than that, we're done here. Have a great day, man.